from the twisted realm of science and the darkest pits of reason comes chilling tales of godlessness. Bear witness to the unfathomable terror that is... The Good Atheist! Well, happy 9-11, everybody. <laughs> no, I, I... that's not a happy day. <laughs> no, it's, it's not. It's a day to... You know what? It's one of those days that people would probably want us to talk about. We're not going to talk anything about 9-11, I've decided, during the show. I don't want to talk about it. Not about... Nothing at all. Well, what do you want to ta- what, what do you want to talk about in terms of nine eleven? Well, I don't really have much to talk about in terms of nine eleven. I just, I, I personally, I wanted to see what the truthers were up to because I've been reading Michael Shermer as of late. So I'm like, ooh, oh, the conspiracy, oh, c- conspiracy theories. Let's look at that. But at the same time, there's no new evidence. And it's just cra- crazy. It's people the yelling. same fucking shit all the time. These these people are always saying like, oh, that's impossible for a plane to have crashed in a building and and that building go down. Someone must have, uh, it must have been a government uh, plan. I'm like, what the fuck? People who still think that those passengers are alive on some island. On the island, yeah. No, no, it's it's total bullshit. Maybe they watch too much Lost. I don't know if you (laughs) should get away with that shit. (laughs) It turns out at the series finale, they're the survivors of (laughs) 9-11. That's not a good, no. No, it's an American show. They would never do that. Uh, Hopefully, I managed to fit the intro song that I wanted to put in, which was, "They, They Might Be Giants. Uh, Science is Real, which is just an awesome little song. If you went to the site and you you, you played it, uh, or if you haven't done it, go to the site right now. It's on the sidebar. You need to listen to it, and you need to listen to it like ten times. Yeah, you'll want to. It's a very catchy song. It gets stuck in your head. I think my neighbors probably hated me. The <laughs> landlord was doing work on my apartment, and like the sound really travels from my bedroom to outdoors. And I was playing that song like over and over. And Considering over. it's less than two minutes. Yeah, seriously, you know, it's like. I, <laughs> I know that science <laughs> I is <understand>. real. <laughs> yeah. Enough. <laughs> Enough with the reality. I have that bad fucking compulsion myself to listen to songs that I like, like again and again and yeah. again. I've, I it's guess. almost. I want to commit them to memory, so that's the best trick. Usually, if you want to commit anything to memory, just. Repetition. Repetition, repetition. And, and, and it, you know what's really interesting about why you remember it more? It, well, it turns out that, you know, when your, your, your brain cells, like in between sort of like the neurons, there are synapses, right? And they, yeah, right. They're responsible for sending electrical signals from one end to another. Now, the first time an electro, uh, uh, like a signal tries to travel from one neuron to the, to the next, it's difficult. But the more okay. it does so, the more easily it can move. So essentially, you just have to send that electricity to go through <laughs> again and again and again. And next thing you know, it just it gets easier every time you do it. So it's interesting. It, you know what? There, there's there's a lot of ways actually. Which are these are interesting ways that people can hack their own brain to improve their memory. One of the ways that people do this, and this is pretty fucking cool. Um, what they do is let, let's pretend you have a deck of cards, and you're trying to remember each of those cards in order but by only looking at those cards once. You might think, holy shit! Like, yeah. how can you handle that much load, right? Yeah. Well, there's a guy I was watching in a documentary. He had a really cool way to do it. What he would do is he would go on a walk. Okay. He lived in, in, in England. So he'd go on a walk, and he would look at landmarks. So he'd look at Big Ben. He'd look at, uh, I don't know, the other bridge right, landmarks. landmarks. Whatever, landmark. some there's... bridge, Buckingham Palace, blah, blah, blah. The touristy fucking parts that most you, British you people wouldn't even touch with a 10-foot pole. They're like, fuck that noise. <laughs> That's for the tourists. That's annoying. That's where, you know, loud, loud fat Americans go. <laughs> to, take, to take pictures and try to get those guards to talk. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> the bullshit touristy stuff. But what he would also do is he would also try to think about objects. So he'd think about, uh, for every single one of those cards, he would associate it with, say, the Queen of Diamonds with a baseball or the, the Jack with a puppy or something like that. He was okay. just creating... Simple Association. associations. So then what he would do is that once he looked at the cards, he would start a story. So from whatever point that he started, he's like, I was walking and I saw a pony walking down. Ne- and and right, after that, I... With my aunt. With my aunt. And all this... Exactly, exactly. Right. And then he just continues. And next thing you know, the, that one guy could memorize seven decks of cards in just oh, yeah. one... Just w- one th- pass at looking at all of them, okay. he was able to tell you from memory, if you said, okay. okay, third deck, fourth card, he could tell you what it was. That's crazy. All he had to do was go back in his story right. and remember like what the sequence of events. The, uh, and then he, the mnemonic device, yeah. Exactly. So the, and he was saying that there was nothing very unique about his brain. That's just the way that he, uh, just a trick that he had th- thought up. And you know what, you're... 
it's hard for you to remember things that are abstract, but really easy for you to remember things that are more concrete. Yeah. Because that's your life. You don't live in the abstract. You live in the fucking now. You live in the, I need to eat. <laughs> <laughs> not just, you know, I'm just going to sit here and think and uh, philosophize. No, you're not to eat. I, I, I still can only remember the order of the planets using that, that uh, phrase there. My very early morning jam sandwich. No. Is really? You need, you need that? That's, I need that. Wow. I need that. Yeah. <laughs> well, they're good. They're At good tricks. At least every shredded weed is gone. They're good. <laughs> no, I, I, still, I still myself. You still use it. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm in, instinctivized to do it. it just, oh, okay. Every time yeah. I'm like, where am I? Never eat shredded wheat. And I'm like, what a terrible thing to say for shreddies. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Poor shreddies. <laughs> well, shredded wheat in well, general. Well, shredded wheat isn't shreddies. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Shreddies are the little squares. Never eat shreddies whenever. <laughs> <laughs> That's my new one. <laughs> I don't think it's going to catch. No, you don't think so? Never eat shreddies whenever. Well, considering I don't think they have shreddies outside of Canada. Isn't that a Canada thing? I don't know. I have not. Uh, you know, I don't travel a lot. This no. is this is one of those you things where I'm not a I am not a worldly man. Okay? We don't have cookie crisp, man. I am the fuck. You know what I am? I am the opposite of David Attenborough. I am just not a well traveled man. <laughs> I'm less well traveled than you, my friend. Yeah, you I know. know. I've been on one plane. You have never been on I any have, plane. The furthest that I've ever been from home was I've been to Ontario and I've been to New Hampshire. Oof. That's that's as far as I've ever gone. Well, you know, Kant never traveled more than like five kilometers from his home in his entire life. Yeah, was he bored out of his skull too? I don't know. I'm sure he <laughs> <laughs> probably not. You know, <laughs> thinking about logical positivism and all these other kinds of things. Yeah, I don't have the brain capacity for that. I, I want to see things and, and experience. I want to make those guards talk. I could do it. <laughs> oh yes, for all of those of you that are not aware. Ryan isn't the, my co-host. It's actually Jeff. I forgot to mention the fact that. Oh, you were, did I not? I, was, I don't think we I did an improper an intro. intro. People couldn't figure it out. I suppose it would have helped if I had made the joke about handling the big load <laughs> earlier. Well, you know, you're you're on often enough that. <laughs> Do people sort recognize of, my voice? Oh uh, well, you know, I I a couple of days ago. That, this will actually segue me into one of the things I wanted to talk about. The first thing I want to talk about. Which is basically, I I was uh, asking a bunch a bunch of the the podcasting fans to give me some feedback on the podcast because uh, next weekend, not this weekend, but the weekend after, I have a presentation to give for PodCamp Montreal, which is uh, pretty much where bloggers and podcasters are coming. I had presented them. It's one giant mother's basement. <laughs> It's not quite that bad. Shut up. <laughs> We're trying to get people that we, on your ha we, we have fans in Montreal. They're not many, but I know they're there because I get PayPal receipts and stuff. <laughs> and <laughs> so I know where you live. <laughs> Anyways. Continue your story. So uh, basically, yeah, I had, pre I had presented the idea of, 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 well, of putting together – presented the idea. I would thought of the idea of putting together a presentation to describe – freemium and podcasting because I wanted to tell people that hey I've been trying this whole freemium uh, experiment on uh, on on my podcast and so far it's a pretty big success and 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 the people that have paid uh, some of them have paid way more than I ever asked for because you know there's I give people the option to give more if they want to give more and and people do take that option hmm. and I I wanted to talk about what I figured out so far but you know there's also a lot of things about this podcasting game and I'm just I am not aware of like my first question was like, "What the fuck do you people like about the show?" <laughs> That's the first question. You know, you everybody might take that for granted, but for God's sakes, I just hit the record button, people. It's true, and I put that fucking shit out there. I, I'm I'm a witness. He's a witness. Yeah. There you go. I I was I was sitting leisurely on a couch five minutes ago, and, <laughs> and I was telling you, "Sit down, this fucking like, chair." Sit the chair. We're recording a podcast. I'm like, "Huh? What?" I'm a taskmaster. That's he what really is. Sound he really he's very skilled with a whip. <laughs> See, now they know it's me. You big gay boy. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I had asked uh, some of the fans for, for feedback. Now, I came to two conclusions about why you guys probably like the show. These conclusions are not, you know, cemented yet. If you, if you want to go to the site uh, and on this podcast or on the post itself, you can provide your own comments if you think I'm wrong. But essentially what I gather is that you guys like the fact that it's a conversational in nature uh, and it doesn't have, like, some kind of news... Uh, type of oh, today's events. Uh, <laughs> you can't see this, but he's holding an imaginary earpiece. I, you know what? I, I'm a performance artist, it's and, true. and and I'm sure that there's elements that they may be missing from just only listening to a podcast. Well, that's what happened with me when we were doing the. Uh, was it a bonus podcast with the three of us? Yes, that's right. Yeah, were, like, is I, it you I, waving or something? Yeah. Well, no. What would end up happening is just I would just be watch. It would be like watching. Like you'll, they'll notice if they play it back. I said like. 
three things because eventually you guys just started talking and I fell into the I'm listening to the podcast <laughs> mode and I was just like, ah, oh, this is so, like, what a great like, podcast. I'm getting, exactly. I'm, just, I'm getting a sneak peek at the podcast. <laughs> oh, I'm supposed to contribute? <laughs> I never oh, actually thought man. of it. It's probably one of the problems with the with the three people dynamic. Yeah. Plus, I mean, some people were complaining that the sound quality wasn't that good. I mean, well, we tried a setup. I mean, yeah, the setup didn't really work that well. I, I I don't yet have the technology to make it work. I mean, the 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 limitations are just I have two phantom powered mics. I can't get three without going and and buying a much more expensive uh, external sound card. And that's okay. Not what about happen. that USB mic? You have? actually, this I is can't a- run. You can't run two. You you run one or the other. Uh, so the whole thing is you need a sound card that has the ability to handle multiple phantom powered mics. We have one that we're, it's suitable for two, but at three, the, the sound quality begins to degrade Suffer and that kind of stuff. Oh. And, and it was an experiment and, and, uh, for now we're not going to yeah. do, do that again because yeah, I, I take a lot of pride in the sound fucking quality and fidelity of the podcast. Mm-hmm. I, I think you probably will agree that there's not a lot of podcasts that go to that extra trouble. No, a lot of them sound like you're hearing it from inside an old copy can. A lot of them sound like what mine used to sound like. <sighs> I, when I had, well, not even that. I remember back in the old days, somebody came over, well, not came over, but somebody emailed me saying, wow, your podcast sound really great. This is when I was actually using just the USB mic. Cr- okay, crouched was that, was over. That like everybody had to like yeah. gather. Oh, yeah, yeah, I remember that. Oh, one. yeah, that was just uncomfortable because you'd have to sit right next to someone and yeah. I don't even want to go back to those days. And I days. drink a lot of coffee. <laughs> if anybody had any hygiene issues, you'd know right away. Yeah. Uh, but even then, people were asking me, how do you do, what, why is the quality like this good and that kind of stuff? And my only answer was, I don't conduct phone interviews that sound like they're in a tin can. So yeah. I'm like, just get somebody <laughs> Skype to... Skype interviews. Yeah, they, we're, the technology's not there yet. And unfortunately, you know, when the technology gets better, where I can actually have conversations with people and, and it doesn't sound terrible, I'd do it. But the honest truth is the reason that we don't have anybody uh, on the show like that, I, you know, maybe I'd like to get PZ Myers on or, or some of the other people. We could probably interest them to do it. I would love to do it. But technology-wise, it's always failing. And the last thing I want to do is an uh, interview that cannot be put up just because the, the technical aspects of it are right. not really cemented. So, suck it. <laughs> <laughs> to do suck this. Suck it, everyone. <laughs> Fucking suck it. Okay, maybe not. Maybe that's not what I'm saying. But, uh, yeah, so I had asked a number of people what they thought. And uh, people were, uh, you know, a couple people were mentioning how much they liked you coming on the show, which is, all, which is why I have you here. Fans ask for it. They, they were like, where's Jeff? We like Jeff. He's funny. So Sweet. you have a fan base, I sir. I have a fan base. Thank you. Fans. I don't know how big that is, and I'm sure there's a couple hey. gay dudes that are listening to it right now. They're probably fantasizing about you. They, really? Yeah. I'm huge. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I did my part. Thank you, sir. I, you know what? Thank I did my you, part for sir. you. Can, you can't say that I didn't try there's to hook you up. There's some good atheist fanfic going out on the internet. <laughs> the last thing I want to say on this is, you know, if you're in Montreal in the area, I don't have the schedule yet. I'm gonna hopefully I'm going to put it on the site because basically the presentation is on either Saturday or Sunday so I'll have released a podcast before then but don't wait for the next podcast to get the information because I'm going to re- be recording that one and putting it up Friday so it doesn't give you much of a time right. stay tuned on the site I'm going to Twitter about it I'm going to try to promote it as much as I, uh, as I can so if you guys are in the area and you want to come uh, and just talk to other bloggers if you're involved in the new media and shit like that just come on over and, uh, and, and say hello Say hello if you can. I, I might be there if it's on Saturday as well. Oh, yeah, exactly. Or, or, or call in sick on, on, on Sunday. Shh. Shh. That's a little secret. Seriously. Are you, no, no, you're coming down with something, right? I heard you cough before. Yeah. Who kn- You may have swine flu. <laughs> I might. I might. Get the fuck out I, of my I house. Ate some, I ate some questionable meat. Get, a, get out of my get isolated <laughs> world, your quarantined your world. Your contaminated garage. Contaminated. It's not contaminated with swine flu. No, that's it's about it's, everything else. <laughs> with human filth. Exactly. Okay, I'm. I want to talk about something that uh, that you 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 may not you you probably didn't see this, but I was watching this last night and I could not get it out of my head. Have you ever seen those Maury Povich shows where they oh, they God. do the paternity testing? Have yeah, you, have yeah, you ever yeah, seen yeah. those? I put up a video about. I, it was a comedy <laughs> video about Joseph finding that he's not the father, and he has yeah. the whole "yeah in your face" oh, reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I went back that. and watched the videos, and one of the things that I said was, "This is what's scary is that this is the real reaction of people, yeah. right?" So guys find out they're not the fathers, and all of a sudden they're like, "Yeah, I don't yeah. have to take care of a kid." Now here's what I wanted to ask: What is the legacy 
of the Maury Povich paternity test show. What the fuck is going to happen to all those kids? Because now there probably are hundreds of kids that went through his little rig of fucking role. Some of them are probably around like 10, 12. Sure. I mean, and they, like that. and I mean, it's, it's, it's on the internet. You can yeah. see it. I mean, you're going to recognize it. I'm sure people are talking about it because I, every time I look at one of those videos, the views are many hundreds of and thousands. Like the last comments like an hour ago kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. People are watching it all the time. Now, is there going to be a couple really fucked up kids that basically grew up with that shit? Because, you know, are you going to feel good about some guy jumping around ecstatic that you are not their child? Well, I'd also there's that, and also, could you imagine like your mom didn't know, like your mom slept around so much she didn't know who your dad was, <laughs> like it's that's pretty like, bad. That's that's a self esteem killer right there. Well, here's here's the thing. The the reason why I was thinking about it is because this shit happens, and it doesn't matter what demographic, poor, rich, whatever. If you look at the, the, the general statistics, there was a study done in the 1970s. This basically, it was a simple blood uh, test analysis that uh, uh, the, the scientists wanted to do. You can read about it on uh, the third chimpanzee. It's, it, okay. This is where the, the, the study is talked about. Because I can't, I don't remember any specifics about it. But what I do remember was that he couldn't release the, the findings because it turned out that 10% of the, pe- of the child, children that he tested were not genetically related to their supposed fathers. And that was, so, that was really fucking controversial he could not release that stuff and i'm sure that if you look you did this findings you probably find something similar look it happens you, people get cockled all the fucking time okay and there are there are probably lots of of people that are not you know if you go back in your own life if you look at sort of like okay what's my ancestry my advice to you is look at the line uh, look at the women in the line if you do the <laughs> paternity thing you're wasting your fucking time because one of those links might be completely fucking off but the only thing you can be sure of is your mom is your mom 100 goddamn percent your mom is your mom but your dad yeah, he might be the mailman he might be the fucking mailman but i mean it used to be that when it's when it's not in the public eye when it's something that's you know usually handled privately i think that it can at least not be as bad as, as as really just watching this made me feel really depressed for humanity. I'll be honest with you. Well, that's that's usually that's what happens to me when I watch any of those like uh, Maury Jerry Springer. Is that even on anymore? But yeah, those yeah, Jerry Springer's still oh, on. I'm pretty god. sure it's the freaking dregs of society. I hate to sound so elitist, but my god, you get the the nastiest people on there, and then you freaking. Well, who knows? Who knows what they're really like? Because oh, you turn not, on the I'm camera, talking, you add well, the yeah, dramatization. Yeah, yeah, the... It's the showiness. It's it's basically mm-hmm. the circus element of this uh, of these kinds of shows yeah. that has that has me just shaking my fucking head. Because there there's gonna there is fallout from that. Well, it's the same thing with the whole Judge Judy crap too. What it's do you mean? The, what specifically? Wow, it's, the just the, the, it's the it's the it's it's basically taking people either at their most. Well, they're least glamorous, let's say. They're most, I don't know, angry, frustrated, emotionally vulnerable, and then just capitalizing on it. Like, because I don't know anybody who watches these shows to learn. Like, do you, do you watch... Uh, do you watch Judge Judy to see learn about law? No, you want to know what kind of crazy shit's going on on, like... Well, I'll tell you... Who's suing t- over what today and what kind of crazy-ass... Shit's gonna go down like on the show. You yeah, but yeah, with, with, with Judge Judy, I think that there is one kind of minor advantage, and the advantage is at least when you watch the show, usually the retard loses. So the guy who had this ridiculous sort like of "I'm scam. gonna sue because I was sad," bear. It's just <laughs> like, uh, no, you can't, <laughs> you can't sue that. So yeah. at, at the very least, oh my, yeah. At the very least, it kind of uh, th- there's there's a negative incentive to go on the show because I mean, if you're a dumbass, you're gonna just lose and look like a fool and at least have some shame. The the reason why I kept thinking about the Povich paternity test thing though is because there's a third party involved here that didn't want to be involved, but they're yeah, now they through just from from the sheer fact that the internet forgets nothing. And it's like a gigantic, unglorious snapshot that I'm like, how do you deal with being the child of one of these people? You know how the fuck how do you, you live that it? down? You're, you're not even born yet, and already like you've got your you've got your high school teasings lined up for you before you're even born. I I think that the rules that you apply to yourself are not rules that you should apply to your children. So if you want to make your a fool yourself on fucking Jerry Springer, it's no problem. But for God's sakes, don't include your damn kids. That's just the lowest of the fucking low. Yeah, I, I'd concur with that. Yeah, for sure. Anyways, that was my fucking little rant. Uh, okay. Just the Maury Povich thing. I had to talk about it. I don't know if people think, oh, this is related to atheism. Fuck you. 
I don't need to pay myself in oh, a corner. I think the existence of the Mari Povic show is proof there's no God. <laughs> There you go. Thank there you, you that's go. The, that's the spin for today. That is a good spin. Thank you. Speaking of spin, I have to I have to make a confession, and I'm I'm making a confession to all you fans out there. And this is just again from asking people feedback on the show. There was one thing that I was reminded of that I keep forgetting. And you you who listen to the show, you should have told me about this because I keep I n- I never remember the promises I keep on the shows. Am I an intro? Uh, just like, for instance, one of the one of the podcasts, I had promised that I was going to talk. The next show was going to be on Buddhism. Oh, uh, and then I completely fucking forgot about it. <laughs> well, here's here's the thing: is I I watch the, the way that I I view the podcast because I, I I subscribe to them. I get the bonus ones as well, and um, I I just listen to them all as sort of a set, right? So like. If you don't do it on the next one, I just assume, oh, I'm listening to the bonus one. And then it's out of sight, out of mind on the next one. I don't... Yeah, so what you're saying is people wouldn't complain if they had the bonus show. That's what you're saying. I like the way you think. Let's go with that. Let's go with that. (laughs) I like the way you think, sir. (laughs) But, well, hopefully most people have are kind of like similar to you, haven't noticed because by the time you listen to the other one, you forgot all my pillow talk. Exactly. Uh, A week is a long time on the internet. It is a lifetime, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. But uh, I did want to kind of um, not necessarily apologize, but I think that I'm going to take this stance that whatever I say that I'm going to do next show, that's a joke. I'm not going to do it. <laughs> so that's how I... How, how next week, Scientology! <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think it could become a, a funny in-joke that I would like to start. It would be kind of like in Arrested Development when they're like, next time on Arrested exactly. Development and Exactly! Because... Uh, it's funnier? Or maybe? Let's go with that. It's, it's that entertainment thing that makes you the cut above. Was that I'm, edu- I'm edutainment. I'm edutainment. You're edutainment. I'm edutainment. Yeah. So was that sycophantic enough? <laughs> I don't know. I guess it'll depend to see how many memberships we sell. As much as we At the end of this generate, podcast. We'll see. <laughs> Which is, you know, here's a funny. This is another thing. A, a couple of the fans were saying, stop mentioning the bonus podcast and stuff like that. We've heard it already and we know about it. Now, I know that you think probably everybody's heard about it and I should probably stop talking about it. I have bills to pay. I just I, <laughs> <laughs> fucking bills to pay. I just skipped the last two seconds of your podcast. Like, there okay, you go. Exactly. I, seconds, I'm gonna okay, keep that. I'm gonna keep that stuff for the end. Problem. So when I give the spiel, if you don't want to hear it, oh, and don't listen to it. <laughs> but I will always button. give the spiel at the end to get people to do it because if they haven't heard it, they should probably hear it. And uh, it is my. It, it's how I can, you know, break. It's his bread and butter. It's Seriously. my bread and butter. Yeah. I, he's he's starving. I had a putsin in front of him today, and he was salivating the whole time. <laughs> I didn't share because I don't have God to tell me that I need to. Well, you know, this is this is actually one of those things that I wanted to talk about the presentation, which is specifically getting people to pay for things that they get for free, is a is is a unique challenge to anybody because you know you start off the show is is free. The whole idea is I'm going to produce more and, and try to charge for it, but at the same time, people are like, well, I get a free one. Why the fuck would I want to pay for it? Yeah, and it's a normal impulse because I'm. I mean, how many podcasts do I pay for? Uh, I will be honest with you and tell you that none. I don't pay for any podcasts. But I'm not actually a fan of podcasts. <laughs> I was about to say, don't you like routinely, you and Ryan, go on these tirades about how other podcasts are very dull? I hate to admit it, but yeah, that is kind of I, I, I have the same thing happen when I'm looking at podcasts, like YouTube videos, like those YouTube friggin' videos where it's like, uh, Pat Condal aside... Those videos where people are just talking into their webcam, it's like, shut up. Response videos and that kind of stuff. Yeah, I, n- yeah, I like, never really got into that. Up. And it's, and it's uh, I'm sure it's really lucrative because there's a lot of eyeballs that will look. But I never mm-hmm. felt as though the eyeballs that look are, you know, there, there's any quality to them. And it's really difficult to kind of get the, the gel and the feel of a community, which is essentially what I try to do with the show. I want right. people to kind of have a bit of an, you know, an interactivity with me. And, and, and hopefully right. that'll... As the membership grows, as the patronage grows, that's that's the plan. Plus, but, what were you going to say? Oh, just the the other thing about it, like YouTube responses to well, we, to, to to bring it to, to atheism, to atheist topics, debates. You can tell within the first like twenty seconds of the video what their angle is going to be and what arguments they're going to use anyway. You know, like you can always tell like, well, Hitler and stop. <laughs> Here's the thing. I've generally the the way that I look at the show and the way that I try to structure the show is I don't want to just. You know, you, I don't want to sit down, try to come up with a, a bunch of quotes and facts that I'm going to tell yeah. you so that you can go out and, and start defending atheism. Yeah. That's not my appeal. My appeal, and, and this is what I think it is, and again, I want feedback. My mm-hmm. appeal is I think individuals like me railing on shit. 
Yeah. This is what I've gathered. Like the, Everyone everybody, loves a curmudgeon. Yeah, there you go. You out there, you listener, you are frustrated from a bunch of things, mostly religious people. They frustrate the fuck out of you. What do you want to hear? You want to hear a guy that's going to talk shit about a little so you can be like, yeah, roast him a little bit. And that's kind of the... The, the South a, Park appeal. Yeah, the South Park. You know, the fact is I'm, I am a little bit aggressive. I think that that's what people like. I take a very... I don't like bullshit and I don't like stupidity stance. And again, I mean... Maybe it is a little bit uh, aggressive, but fuck, man, we get tired of being passive as atheists, so a little bit of uh, aggressivity is the yeah. order of the day, and I think... Isn't it aggression? I just made up a word, motherfucker. Aggress uh -oh. Aggressivity. Aggressivity. Is that like truthiness? Maybe. It's going to be the new word, man. That should be on a shirt. A, aggressivity. A shirt. Aggress doesn't make it, it doesn't aggressivity. even make sense. I, it's one of those words I'm going to regret later. Yeah. I yeah. misunderestimated that word. <laughs> The impact was negative. <laughs> okay, here's the last thing I want to talk about, because this is just kind of funny. Uh, I mentioned it today on one of the uh, articles, which uh, the story about a pastor by the name of uh, Father Pereri. Uh, I don't, am I pronouncing that right? It's Jose Mark Flores Pereira, I think, or Peria. Peria? Okay. Yeah. Jose Mark Flores F Father Pereira. Jose. <laughs> Whatever. God, I'm terrible pronouncing names. I have a phon phonetics dictionary for people's weird last names. Just not used to pronouncing them. Anyways, it brings out your he is a Bolivian who has been living in Mexico for about 17 years. And on uh, September 9th, 2009... That's 999. That's 999, everybody. He decided that he was going to hijack a plane because he had had a revelation from God that something terrible was going to happen in Mexico. And why did he have such a revelation, Jacob? Well, it turns out that according to his wife, he has serious mental problems. <laughs> what a surprise. Although, I'll tell you what's weird. What's weird is that his, uh, his mother, in the, uh, in the interview, his mother admitted that she knew of the plan, but because her son said that he had been divinely ordained by God, she was like, well, God bless you. <laughs> so he basically took a bunch of juice cans, put some little lights on it to make it look like a bomb. Juice cans. Juice cans. Uh, and that was his fake bomb. And he hijacked the plane because he wanted to have the, the, the president of Mexico give an address in Mexico City's Central Square okay. about the gospel. He, wanted, he, he needed him to read it because he's like, well, uh, 999 important? upside down yeah. is 666. I would, I would like to see what he was doing June 6th, three years ago. Actually, he was probably in jail. You see, he was, oh. he's a, he's a uh, recovering drug addict and criminal who was... Uh, and you're saying his brain wasn't all there? I know that this is very surprising. <laughs> that that startles me. You know, it just reminds me that reminds me of the fact that there must be so many people out there. I mean, I don't know what the numbers are. They must be fairly significant. Individuals out there who have serious mental issues that are being masqueraded by, you know, religious fervor. A person just says, Oh, well, he's very religious. Yeah, how can you make that distinction between a guy who's just really religious and a guy who's not <laughs> fucking batshit crazy? Bad shit crazy. <laughs> And, you know, my answer to that question is, do I even care about the distinction anymore? Six of one. <laughs> there, the distinction is very weak. I think that any fervor in something that is just literally unprovable, we should kind of regard with suspicion. Any person who has a conviction that, they're being talk, that they are talking to or that a god is talking to them is the first instance of possible psychopathy, okay? <laughs> <laughs> On a list of things, that's usually one they ask, too, but isn't it funny that we're all uncomfortable that it, it turns out that even people that we would consider to be normal have uh, beliefs that, in the, in the slight extreme, we consider to be psychopathy, you know, right, right. Psych psychopathic in nature. Right, right. So where do we draw that line? Where the hell do we draw that line? I would have drawn the line as soon as he said hijack a plane. <laughs> <laughs> I was I, I was thinking like, God or no God, if you're gonna do something crazy and illegal, like stop. It's a bad idea. It's not even just illegal. I mean, think about how dangerous it, it is to hijack a plane because you I mean there's bound to be people who will either take you down, like you'll either lose your life or people could panic or who knows what the yeah, hell. Yeah, but could I'm, I'm not so much concerned with the guy doing the hijacking. If he gets hurt, eh. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right, but he, I mean, I, he, has, he has a mental fucking problem. I mean, it's not like I look right. at this guy and be like, you should have known better, guy. He needs medication. Well, his, he needs his, help. His mother should have known better. It was his mother that was like, go ahead, right? 
Yeah, well, she gave, her, she, gave her she gave her blessing. She gave her blessing. Yeah. <laughs> That's my attention span that short. Maybe. I don't know. I ain't your fucking so pappy. So anyways, it was his aunt who should have been telling him that... Uh, You're doing no, a see, terrible see, job. I mean, okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> terrible. Terrible. You're fired. Oh, man. I'll see you guys later. It was fun while Take last. your 40 cents and get the fuck out of here. That's oh, your severance pay. My severance is 40 cents. Well. But no, it's, it, in all seriousness... If you had a, 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 I was speaking in general terms. If someone wants to do something crazy and they get hurt in the process, my concern would be more with the people that they could be hurting. That's where I was getting at. Oh with yeah, that. obviously, um, obviously, there's going to be. Yeah, I mean, there's going to be a bit of a priority if you're exactly. saying, "Well, I can shoot him and save forty people." Yeah. Wait, what's the second option? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bam! Or he can shoot forty people and have done with it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But uh, I would think that if someone was aware of what he was doing and knows he has a history of it, like, couldn't she be in a way like an accessory or an accomplice rather? Like, wouldn't I? Don't, I don't know how the law would. Uh, I really I mean, don't if know. She knew I don't want to speak on something I have no fucking clue about, and I don't think that they would seek well, I, I'm not to prosecute that, her. So, They're not uh, going to say like, "You bitch, <laughs> you could have stopped that man, but you didn't." Yeah, I think. Uh, I, I don't even no, think most people would have stopped it because. No, well, okay, maybe the most people would have, but well, geez, there's a contingent of people that just wouldn't. They're like, "Oh my yeah. goodness, you got a revelation. You better do something about it." Yeah, no, I'm not saying. I'm, I'm just saying. I would put that does put if she knew, but I mean, if she knew, he was prone to craziness. Why, like, how did she just? Dis- how did she discern that the voice from God was the voice of God and not? Oh, it's just, it's crazy Jose saying. Well, how many? Thing. How many? If you had a. If you had a family member that was acting kind of weird, would you want to put them in a mental institution? No. So I there is there is kind of a mental institution. Well, Tell what them. what else are you supposed to do? He's a, he's he has his own mind and his own freedom. If he decides to do something, either you put him in a fucking mental institution or you break his legs or you, a la misery. Or, or you tell him not to <laughs> stick and hijack a plane. Oh, well, I'm, maybe somebody said don't do that, but as soon as he said, "Well, God told me to." Now you have only two options. All right. Well, I would probably tell the police that he's going to hijack a plane. All right, well, in doing so, you may ruin your relationship with that family member, too. I mean, they may feel betrayed. They may... Not my son. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying no, that it's I know not as different. black it's and harder, white. It's, harder, it's, harder, it's obviously harder when there's an emotional bond. I won't, I won't argue that at all. It probably is a hard decision, but objectively speaking, you know, she would have... I, I think she had a responsibility to the, let's say, to a, let's say society such as it is to... Uh, well, we have... I think in it. general, we all have a responsibility that we need to stop... Trying to be overly politically correct and recognize when someone's religious fervor is bordering on the psychopathic. It's out of line. It's really, you know, people who are calling for, for violent jihads and or, or individuals that are killing abortion doctors, these are extremes. These are types of behaviors where we're like, this is unhealthy. Something is wrong with this person. And I don't think we would be surprised to find that a lot of these extremists have serious either psychological issues or, you know, mental health issues. It's not that fucking surprising. A lot of these people find something very attractive about religion. Usually what they find attractive about religion is that it has such a, you know, like a very firm structure. You just follow what the book says. Yeah. The problem is the if they follow what the book says, the instruction manual is really messed up, okay? Yeah, that, that Ikea desk is going to look pretty fucked up. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And that, that's essentially one of, the, one of the things that I've always said is that any person who thinks that the Bible is a good manual has not read the full thing yeah. or has at least done some very careful editing. Yeah, those, well, the acrobatics, it's not uncommon. The, the uh, spiritual acrobatics when you read the Bible. Well, that's literal. That's figurative. And, you know, there, there, there are parts, well, I don't know in the Bible, but I do know in the Quran there is a part that says specifically that you are not supposed to interpret things yourself. It's laid out there and you're supposed to I follow think, it. I think it says in the Bible something online that not even like you... you well, the you New can't Testament. Add, you can't remove. You can't do anything with it. You take it as it is. I believe it's in the Bible, but again, I, I've not read the. Full the new, I know that the New Testament basically that Jesus says that he's not there to change up the the, the yeah, old to laws. Yeah, rewrite God's laws. Yeah. Right, exactly. Even, even though most Christians say that he did merely by existing, existing, which I, I, and I guess and dying for your sins, shedding so much blood, so much, blood. So much of it. If you want to see how much, watch The Passion of the Christ. Or better yet, here's an idea. Fucking don't. Do not waste your time watching well, that like, snuff it, it, film. <laughs> seriously. Well, that's what one of my friends like was ta- was talking to me about that whole, like, you know, The Passion of the Christ is such a great movie, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, 
it might be for you, but for me, it would be like watching them beat the shit out of a guy who is probably a nice guy for like an hour or It's two not just hours. even beating the shit. It's torturing. Torturing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's the thing. It's like, I don't get off on that. Like, I don't know why you get off on that. Like, who is the comedian who was saying, like, the last thing if I were Jesus that I'd want to see is a bunch of people seeing him dead, like, <laughs> hanging, like, the celebration. I don't know. I don't know. It was pretty much like... There is there yeah. is a sick morbidity to it. I exactly, mean, it's yeah. it's not as though Christianity has always had such a fascination uh, about the more bloody elements of it. I mean, yeah. the, their first religious symbol was not a cross; it was a fish, a symbol of life. A cross is a symbol of death. <laughs> but that's what I think. That's what happens when you switch the focus to that of uh, to, to resurrection, basically. Because I mean, most Christians really focus on that. They're like, well, that's that's what it's all about. He died and he came back. Yeah. Bam! That's the that's that's checkmate. The, <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's their checkmate. So, you either accept that or you don't. And if you don't, well, it change the fact that he came back. Remember, there was no body in that tomb. There was not. That, there was no that, body. That proves that he flew away. <laughs> I think that definitely proves that there are some very morbid grave robbers. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. But uh, I, I would, if there was a messi- messianic-like figure, I would probably steal their their bodies and chop up their bones and make little necklaces out of them myself. So there you go. Is that more morbid? <laughs> it's, it's I'm just an, opp- I'm an opportunist. Right? Just... I'm an opportunist. Look, those bones are going to go to waste. They're just going to turn to dust anyway. Why don't they turn to dust while they're in these beautiful jars available now for well, thirty nine ninety five? You don't. The Catholic Church has a lot of these kinds of relics, man. They're the Oratoire Saint Joseph, which is in Montreal, and it's kind of like one of the probably one of the more beautiful uh, churches that you can visit. There's a lot of really nice churches in Montreal. There are quite a few. Yeah, there there are quite a few, but the uh, oratory is probably the crown jewel of it, and inside is a weird mummified heart of St. Joseph. Uh, I've visited it, I've seen it, it's quite disgusting, sir, Uh, but you know, there's always a few people that are crawling up the stairs in the hopes that they're going to be healed, and uh, we have those fucking people over here, man. Uh, you 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 made have you ever visited the uh, no, the place? I, no, I don't. Uh, the gay it's free, you know. Doesn't really want to go to church. I don't know. I I view it more as look the same way that I would look at a uh, you know the, the the temple of Zeus in Athens or oh it's not for me. I just I, I I just think I would make people uncomfortable. What by your presence? I don't know. I don't think most of the people that visited are even that religious. They're probably yeah. just like touristy. me. They're very touristy. Yeah. I mean, it's a it's a spot. Well, to it visit. is a, it is a yeah it's an attraction. We're, I don't know we're how much check money out this mummified heart. Then we're going to the road. <laughs> that is the fucking sequence of events. <laughs> you had your bets. That's You're like, a, well, I don't know if such I... a downer, man. Let's <laughs> we'll go to the road afterward. No, 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 you had your bets. You're like, well, we're gonna go here, and in case we're healed of any of our sicknesses, then we go to the road. Then we'll go to the road. <laughs> It'll be a happy day. Look, I can walk again. It's a miracle. Yay! Time to go to the road. And if you you don't walk well, you're gonna go home. Well, most of the rides of the road you can sit on anyway. So. <laughs> I don't know if you, I don't know if they accept people in wheelchairs in the in in La Ronde. Do they? Know. I've That's only been to, I've only been to La Ronde once. I took I went on one ride, and I was dizzy the rest of the time I was there. I have no like wow. I had no, You're like a grandmother. No, it's okay. Let me. <laughs> I went on the ride and I got all dizzy. No, um, here's what happened. Okay, I was with my friend. She had, she was friends. visiting. I don't, I don't have I don't have friends. <laughs> this is a lie. Okay, a, I'm a liar. Okay. Anyways. Um, I'm going to tell my you story. You were with your friend. I was with my friend, and we were at La Ronde. She She was visiting from California, and so she'd never been. So we went there, but all the rides had these huge lineups except for one. Uh, Which was? Uh, I can't remember what it's called. It's like it's this, It's the huge one. It's like Behemoth or... Gig- I don't know. I don't remember what it's called. It's a crazy... The Colossus or something. Yeah, yeah, it's a crazy, crazy ride. It's really, But the thing is, is the, <laughs> the, the, the entrance was like this sort of King Kong entrance, right? But there was no lineup. So we're like, oh, well, we'll go on this ride. There's no line. And we get in, and the lineup only starts once you're through those gates. We were in that lineup for, I think it was, I want to say, I, I want to say three hours, but that seems so ridiculous that it can't be. But It I probably to, was. Yeah, I, I seem to recall we got there at, like, nine or something and didn't get off of that thing until, like, three. <laughs> Anyways, the, but after we did that, because I, I, I'd never been on a roller coaster since I was, like, what, Santa's Village when I was, like, ten? Wow. So, like, I got off of that. I'm just like, I wasn't prepared for this. I have to sit down. All right. You, went, you went a little bit off, too much off the deep end. It's kind of like learning how to dive on a 10-meter platform. That's not yeah. a good idea. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. 
For those of you that don't know what a meter is, I'd say roughly 24 feet. Uh, no, it's not just 24 in, feet. Is it? It's uh, 22 feet, Tw- probably. No, 22. 22. 22, 22 it's 2. In- 2. 22 inches. I said 10 meters, pal. Oh, I thought you said one meter. <laughs> You're insane. You're insane. Okay, truth is I don't know actually how many feet it is. In, 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 in any event, 10, 10 meters is about the length of... Uh, of a lot. Yeah, <laughs> the height of your house, maybe. Yeah, or maybe more. Maybe go. more. Yeah, Anyways, yeah. it's all it's a it's high. I don't yeah. know feet because honestly, why am I using feet? Base ten, base ten, base ten is where it's at. Seriously. America, you guys, if you want to really, that together. I think that they should actually switch over to the metric system as one of those. We are going to go with science. You know what I mean? Because right now, the whole holding on to feet and yards and meters, uh, arbitrary units. It just smacks to me that you never really kind of jumped on the whole science bandwagon, and it's going to leave you behind. And embarrassing things happen. Remember a couple of years back when one of those uh, Mars probes crash landed because they had made a conversion issue. There was a conversion problem. Them because they were using feet and the uh, European Space Agency was using meters. I mean, come on, Isn't guys. Isn't the rest of the world on meters? Yes, there's only two fucking countries in the world that still use that system. Only two. And the other one, I think, is Ghana. It's just not really like the the whole world has taken uh, off with this. And the only place that, uh, that where it's maintained is... Base 10 thing. The only thing it places is America. Now, I'll... Credit where credit is due. They've estimated that if they switched over, it would cost them like a few billion dollars, like many hundreds of billions of dollars for, to, co- to convert. Oh, because they'd have to change everything. They'd have to change everything. Wow. Uh, so I'm like, you've got to do it before it's too late. What are, you, are you still going to be using that in 100 fucking years? It's, it'd be embarrassing. <laughs> Just embarrassing. You know what? The metric system is the language of science. I ever tell you what actually how they got the meter, how they measured the meter? Um, no Where the meter comes from? No. The meter was actually is supposed to be one one hundred thousandth of the length of one of the meridians. So if okay. basically you know how how the Earth is, you, you can divide the Earth into right, right, right. Uh, the, into meridians. But so basically because it's a it's mostly a circle, you can give chunks and yeah. they, we we use like uh, you know like time differentials to measure the distance. Be, you know, it's like a one hour kind of thing. So yeah. in in during the French Revolution. Uh, they actually had scientists that were, or, or, or dudes that were measuring the length in order to be able to kind of come up with a scientific a unit, of unit of measurement. Now, the funny thing about the first meter is that it was actually wrong. The calculation made it so that it was slightly off. Okay. And even, even the meter that was cast into uh, platinum, which is in France somewhere in a museum, okay. uh, even that one's off. We have made that correction since, so... The meter really is sort of one one hundred thousands or whatever the number is okay. of of one of those meridians, but uh, the the original number was wrong. But still, I mean, it was an it was an attempt to say let's use a non arbitrary unit of measure, like logical. Okay, let's yeah. And the funny thing about when they were taking the measurement is that the 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 French countryside was ablaze in basically the the, the French Revolution, which was the most un uh, you know irrational <laughs> violent uh, aspect of their society and at the same time this survey is going on and they're trying to uh, there, there's a book that was written actually about it uh, the uh, what's it called again the units of measure or something like that anyways very interesting story but uh, that's that's the story of the about meter about five books and three of them are strategy guides <laughs> <laughs> well you have many books you just like to read the first time pages right well here's what happens is Actually, this is going to paint me as such an illiterate. I do read books, and I do read a lot. I just reading from cover to cover. I, I I tend to lose interest very quickly. Like I'll get a book, and I'll read on the way to the bus or something. But then I'll get to this point where I can't get past a certain page because either there's too much stuff happening, and I have to constantly put the book down and stop. And I'm just like, I'm so sick of looking at this book, and then I get a new one. I have like a bunch of books that have bookmarks anywhere between like 15 and 40. Just like- Essentially, I think the problem is that you want to know more of the stuff in the books than you do uh, you want to know it more than you want to read it so you'll yeah. get the book with the hope that you'll yeah. learn it but you, well, the passion of, to read the, it the is other, not quite as some, a lot of the other a, a lot of uh, the other part is for example with the god delusion um, I've read most of it and I actually listened to the book on tape to make sure I got all of it right but the thing is is most of the arguments that he was making in that book I had heard him make before reading the book. So it was like, okay, no, 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 okay, he, I I already know this. Yeah, I know this. Yeah, I know, like you know That's why I, you like, read that it was, first and then you listen. That's to well, that's with his new book. That's what I'm going to do. Uh, you know. You're going to read the, his new book? I'm going to. Well, I'm going to buy it's it. It's time for the Jeffrey Jones challenge, everybody. Uh-oh. We're going to keep Okay, give us an estimated time where you're going to read it and review it 
for everybody that's I listening. I want to review it on the. Oh. Yeah. What? Well, well, you don't want to review it? I'll, uh, now I have to read it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do it. That's oh. a great challenge. So you know right. we're we're gonna ask. Give me until second week October because it's coming out September twenty second, right? Uh, I don't know. I really don't know. I think it's September twenty second. Give me three weeks after it comes out to read it. Well, I'll, I'm gonna let the fans decide. You know, because oh really? We'll be see. Be generous, they... fans. Remember, you love me. <laughs> Please, they love may they me. may turn on you quickly. They might. I was they... pretty cold to that Jose's mother. <laughs> <laughs> She should be jailed! <laughs> That's it, man. You gotta read a book now. There you go. That's your punishment. Okay, I think we're gonna wrap it up. Let's go.